What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with a vintage Kenner market update. We have some interesting items that sold this weekend over on eBay. Everything from, as you can see here, the early bird certificate package all the way to the last 17. Um, before I dig in too much, I want to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. Your support allows me to make more and better videos. This was a really interesting one. This was the early bird certificate package. It was being sold by Brian's Toys, who, you know, if you collect Star Wars figures, I think you know them by now. Um, this was not complete, though, because I, I believe, you'll have to ask Chris W., since he's an expert on this stuff, but I believe that there was like a pack of pegs that came with this or something. I, I, I don't know uh, everything that's included. There's like a certificate page that's also missing where you have to fill out the paperwork. But essentially, for those of you unfamiliar with this, you have to fill out a, a little card. And here, uh, here on the back is probably the best you can see that this uh, this example did not include most of the paperwork. But what you do is you fill in this little card, you mail it into Kenner, and then uh, Kenner would mail to you between like January and June of 1978, the early bird kit, which or the early bird uh, set, which included Chewbacca, Leia, Luke, and R2-D2. Unfortunately, Kenner did not have action figures ready in time for the 1977 Christmas season, selling season. So they came up with this idea to do this early bird certificate set and so you know th this one's missing some of the paperwork it's it's a really nice uh clean looking base for this uh for this early bird kit but it did have some kind of wear to the to the cart or to the the backing there um but anyway it, it was it was a nice it was a really nice piece of collecting history it was not complete though so just keep that in mind when you see this price this thing sold for tw uh, 1247 dollars which you know, you can see some damage there in that upper left-hand corner. You know, it used to be that, that this set, AFA graded, would be under $2,000, fully fully complete and in, you know, untouched condition. And so now it's really come back, you know, it's, it's just gotten so expensive. And, you know, where even an incomplete example uh, sells for $1,250 plus shipping. So really cool. You know, still had all the little uh, peg hole things filled. You know, they were still they hadn't been pulled out yet and uh and you can see that one certificate there but you know it was missing a number of the of the of the important paperwork that you can see on the back there um in this lower left hand corner so it was missing the actual piece that you mail in as well as some other important pieces to make this item complete but nevertheless pretty cool to see one of those uh, sell at auction uh there were some really interesting loose graded figures this one again was from collectible investment brokerage which is affiliated with afa uh, this, I mean, the price for Boba Fett's continue to go up. This was an older style case, as you can see here. It doesn't have the recessed accessory case. And it sold for, it was an AFA 85 example, and that still sold for $403. So Boba Fett's continue to go up. I mean, you know, I was thinking, I, I was picturing this thing would sell maybe max $300. And, and it, it, it shot past that, you know, it sold for 30, 33% above, above my estimate. Um, another one that sold really high, this was a No COO AFA 85 Stormtrooper. Uh, you know, a No COO, this probably came in like the Palatoy Trilogos or on, you know, standard Palatoy card backs. But uh, a, a nice clean Stormtrooper. And as we've talked about, you know, when you got these white figures that are still really high grade, updated case, you're going to be paying big money for it. And CIB tends to, tends to attract also international buyers since they do ship internationally. Um, so that one sold for $345 plus shipping. Um, this to me was the more interesting and exciting of the two loose graded stormtroopers that I, I, I note in this video. But this was the Lily Letty. And the Lily Letty stormtrooper has two different variations. The standard, you know, uh, Lily Letty stormtrooper has both peg holes on the bottom of the feet that uh, are, uh, are standard like you would have for any other figure. And then you have this example where one of the peg holes is, is slightly filled in. And there were several figures that had this variation where one of the peg holes was filled in. And I don't remember all of them, so I, you'll have to forgive me. But I know that the Stormtrooper, obviously, I believe Obi-Wan Kenobi, Boba Fett, and potentially the TIE Fighter pallet were the four. So don't quote me on that, but I think those are the four that had the, uh, that had the variation where one of the peg holes was kind of, you know, filled in about halfway. So you can see that there on the left, uh, on the, your left, his right foot is, is, you know, slightly filled in versus the other foot. And it's loaded, it's labeled as such on the UKG label. It was an 85 grade 
UKG, Lily Letty, Field Peg. So it's one of the more desirable variations for the Lily Letty Stormtrooper. And it was a gorgeous example, really nice, clean colors. That one sold for $485 or 361 pounds. I don't know, I don't know what the going rate is for that, to be honest with you, but given how clean that one is, that's that probably sounds about right. I probably would have paid about that, but uh, it's just hard to it's hard to gauge with an item like that because they just come up so irregularly. Um, here was a 31 back A debut card for Han Solo in his Hoth outfit. Nice clear blister. It was graded AFA 75, as you can see here. Card got an 80, blister 75, figure 75. So uh, clearly there was some paint degradation or just, yeah, you know, actually it looks like there's just some factory, you know, what probably happened is this was put into the blister, uh, maybe where the figure was still wet or there's just some oversplash there on his, on his right hand uh, glove there. The, the white has kind of splattered onto the paint or onto the, onto the blue jacket. So, uh, so it got a 75 for that grade. And that sounds about right. I mean, obviously it would have been an 80, 85 if this, if the figure was perfect and the, and the weapon was still attached inside the blister. But given that it had some factory paint error and the, and the weapon had come loose, it dropped it to a 75, but it didn't seem to matter too much on the price. It still sold for $830 plus $20 shipping. I mean, I've seen this figure or this 31 back A in higher grade sell for a thousand dollars plus. So um, that that to me is probably about right, um, given how pretty that one is. Uh, another one that, that I've, I've really liked to get in a clear blister is this one, the Dengar. I believe that uh, his debut card was the 41 A back with the survival kit offer, but this one was the 41 back E offerless. It was a yellow blister and it was 75 plus grade. That one sold for five hundred and fifty four dollars. So. We saw in the recent Hakes auction, a clear blister AFA 80 or 80 plus sold for over $1,100. So, so Dengar is, is one of those figures that's just really hard to find in high grade. And um, even when it's not particularly in high grade, like this, I mean, 75 plus is a good grade, don't get me wrong. But, uh, but $554 is a big number to pay for um, a yellow blister Dengar. It's just, just really, really tough to find him. Uh, here's another one. This one sold a little lower. It, you know, it was a fairly low grade. It was a yellowed 70, but it was a 47 back Chewbacca. Pretty, pretty heavy yellowing on the blister there, which is kind of abnormal for for Empire Strikes Back cards. But it all comes down to storage. You know, before grading, this thing was probably held in an attic somewhere that was 100 degrees somewhere, and that'll yellow the blister pretty quick if if that you know if, if it wasn't stored properly prior to grading. And uh, that one sold for $240 plus shipping. That's probably about right for, you know, given the condition of that one. Uh, this was an interesting one. This one was 100% complete Empire Strikes Back packaging AT-AT Walker. Really, really pretty item. And uh, here it is right here. And I don't, I don't know if this one, you know, they show, they show the box and they show the item complete, but it didn't mention the uh, whether it had inserts or not, I didn't, I didn't look at that before I sent it, but my guess is it was just the box, uh, complete with, or the box with the complete AT-AT walker. You can see the chin guns. The chin guns are the most expensive things for, for these, uh, AT-AT walkers. Um, there's a lot of repro, reproduction of the, of those as well. So just be careful when you're buying those. Um, but anyway, that one sold for $347 plus $50 shipping. I don't know. I mean, I sold mine for about half that price when, when I had a complete one that I sold for about half that price last year or year before that. So, um, it's, you know, given what the market's done, it doesn't surprise me too much. This is one that did surprise me on the high end. And I forgot, I apologize, but there is a website now where I can check the best offer accepted. But before I started filming this, I forgot to check, uh, that it's, I have the website now. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to make an effort go, going forward for these best offer accepted items to look up the sales price. So I forgot to do that before I started filming this one, but this one was an AFA 85 Return of the Jedi 48 back with the free knee and numb offer. This is like a transition card, very desirable, especially in a clear blister like this, but this four line is gorgeous. Really, really nice item, 85 grade unpunched. So about as good a condition as you can get. But uh, anyway, it was listed at 999 best offer accepted by Brian's Toys. I can promise you that it was in the 950 range because Brian's Toys does not come off of the list price very much when when they do take offers. Uh, that's been my experience anyway with them. They just don't don't negotiate hardly at all. But uh, really pretty item. I don't know if I would have paid 900 plus for it, but it was, it was really nice. Uh, here was one. This was an AFA uncirculated 85 Max Rebo band. I mean, me personally, it's it's a pretty hideous case. I, I don't find this attractive at all. 
it looked like one of the pegs had come loose for uh, the size noodles figure. He was kind of like turned around and not in his case properly, but I don't know. To me, I, I, I'm not a big fan of how this of this case set up. But anyway, here it is. It's a U85. So somebody took this out of a sealed box and had it gritted loose, which, you know, AFA doesn't do that anymore. But um, pretty cool to see anyway. And that one sold for $550. But again, it's, you know, it did have some damage to the pegs. Uh, well, no, it looks like the figure had just jostled loose. It looks like the pegs were okay, but they just were set too far apart from one another. And, you know, during shipping, the size Snoodles character had, had kind of gotten turned around in shipping. So, um, but anyway, just a data point there for those of you looking for a graded, loose graded Max Rebo band, $550 plus shipping. Jeff's Collectible Empire, Jeff Jacobs, who's a big collector, he's got a toy shop and he does a lot of uh, auctions on eBay. Uh, this was one I actually considered bidding on but I held off. This was a Palatoy 65 back D Darth Vader. It was graded 80 by Collector Archive Services. Uh, the subgrades were 85, 80, 80. Very, very nice Vader and uh, nice clear blister, obviously. Most of these Palatoys don't have the yellowing issue that uh, the U.S. cards do, but uh, beautiful item. That one had the KB toy sticker too, which I love those. I've got several of the tri-logos that have that KB toy sticker. Um, and that one sold for $493 plus $15 shipping. I think I was going to, I think it was at like three something. I can't remember. It was like three, 380 or something. And I was thinking about bidding and then it jumped up right at the end. And that, that made my decision for me. So, um, this was another one that Jeff's collectible empire had. This was the 79 back B with the Anakin Skywalker offer. Nice clear blister. And it was graded, uh, CAS 80, um, 80, 85, 85 were the sub scores on that one. But a really nice example, and that one sold for $316 plus $15 shipping. That was an unpunched, too. Um, I don't know, man. You know, that seems pretty fair to me, too, given that was unpunched, clear blister. It's it's just really hard to find these U.S. Return of the Jedi card backs with clear blisters. So I, I think it was worth every penny of that to me. If I'm if I'm an Ewok collector, then I, I would have paid that pretty, pretty fair price, in my opinion. Um... Here was a Luke Skywalker. This was a 79 back A, and it was yellowed, obviously. That one was graded card 80, blister 85, figure 90. But uh, pretty nice example. I don't know which Luke it was. Let's see if we can look it up here. Looks like it's a TJ, so a Taiwan. It's hard to tell. It's hard It's hard to tell because the picture's so blurry, but it looks like this factory code's 8. I don't know if that's an H or, or a T. But uh, anyway, completely unhelpful information there from me. Uh, anyway, it was, again, yellowed, 80, uh, yellowed AFA 80. Uh, that one sold for $522 plus shipping. I mean, that's, that seems to be the going rate right now. For any, any mint on card, high grade, whether it's yellowed or, or not, you're going to be paying some pretty good money now for Luke Skywalker. There's just so many focus collectors that, that love Luke Skywalker and, and like to build up the different card backs and different factory codes and all that stuff. So, um, But a really nice item overall and probably in line with market. Um, it was a really beautiful one that I was just following for the fun of it. This, this seller had a Lumat on the actual Lily Letty card back. So La Guerra de, de las Galaxies. This was the actual Mexican market Lily Letty. Uh, really, really gorgeous item. It's got that Lily Letty logo there in the bottom right-hand corner of the card back. Had some yellowing to the figure torso, as you can see there. But it was graded overall uh, AFA 75. The card got a 75, blister 80, figure 75. You know, any anytime you see a blister subscore of 80 or above on an actual Lily Letty card back, that is really, really rare. Most of these got beat up and just did, are not survive, you know, didn't survive the market. So, um, but what a gorgeous item. The seller actually started the bidding on this one at $9.99, so about a thousand bucks. So I knew it was gonna sell. I was just gonna be curious as to what it sold for. And it was a US seller too. So uh, you didn't have to worry about, you know, making it through the uh, the Mexican post office, which can be kind of hit or miss sometimes. It, it can be really uh, long lead times. I've had stuff get lost before. So the fact that it was already in the U.S. market was was very attractive for bidders. And it got bid up to twenty two twenty five. That mark that number is pretty fair. I mean, I've seen a number of mint on card uh, Lily Lettys like these that uh, were ungraded. That's that you know the list prices on Facebook are are right in line with that. So I think that was a very fair price given the given the item, but uh, really cool to see that one. It's interesting too, on this one, the Lumat, you know, the the name pill is kind of off center. It's not centered. And that's true for a number of these. I, I, I can't tell you which ones off the top of my head had the off centered versus centered and so forth. But uh, 
what an awesome card back. And this is the positive card back. So there's two different, you know, for those new, those of you who are new to uh, the Lily Letty card backs, I've got a few in my collection that are just loose graded with the card backs. And so there's two different kind of card backs. You can do the positive card backs like this, where it's a gray background with black font and black drawings for the figures, or the negative card backs, which are all black with white used for the drawings of the figures and all the wording. So um, typically the, the, the negative card backs are more desirable or, or a little bit more rare, but um, they're both really desirable. I mean, don't get me wrong for just for a, <clears throat> just for a card back in good condition without any handwriting on it or check box and, you know, checks on the back. Um, you know, you, you can, depending on the character, you can pay some big money for them. Like a Boba Fett, for example, would probably be just for the card back would be $1,500. So anyway, um, here's another really nice one that I was thinking about. This is an Instagram seller that, but if you go to Black Cal Collectibles on Instagram, you, they're probably worth a follow because they uh, will announce what auctions they've got going that week on eBay. So I think I think it's at Black Cal Collectibles. Just search them on Instagram. I'm sure they'll pop up. But they have a lot of nice items, and they're always at auction. And they, you know, they're pretty reasonable. Uh, this one was a pretty reasonable in price. I felt like um, if I had been in the market for it, I definitely would have bid on this. This was a CAS 80. Imperial Dignitary. This had the Dutch Clipper catalog on the back, as you can see it attached on the bottom there. Um, but really nice. It was graded uh, overall 80. The card got an 80. Blister 75. Figure 85. And, you know, not to diverge too much here, but, you know, everyone's like, well, how, you know, it's a 75 um, and the other two were 85s. And so this one is one where the other two subscores were enough to pull up the overall score to an 80. But if the blister had been really, really badly ba uh, mangled, let's say that blister score was a 70, you could see an overall score of a 70, depending on how bad of a 70 that was or how bad of a 75. In this case, CAS said, okay, well, it was a 75 subscore, which I think even that's pretty harsh. I mean, this thing looks like it's got pretty nice shape to it. It just had one little kind of, it had a few few dings on the front of it, but it held its shape really well. It's the etched, etched, you know, etched, etched style corners. That's a factory thing. Um, really, I mean that that blister is in pretty good shape. So that that seventy five sub score that they gave for the blister was not enough to bring down the overall score to a seventy five. It still got the eighty, but if it had been a really badly mangled seventy five, then you could have seen an overall seventy five. So, wow, I, I I totally diverted from our, our our subject matter here, but I thought I'd share that. And you know, to, to go back to that, here we here we have another example. This one was an Imperial Gunner ninety two back Power of the Force. Look how badly mangled this uh, this blister is. You know, they gave that a 75, which seems very generous. Very generous, right? But, you know, the card score was an 80. The figure score was an 85. The blister was a 75. But because that 75 was so bad, it brought the overall score for this one all the way down to a 75. So that gives you two different examples there where the 75 on this one was not nearly bad enough to prevent it from get you know from from preventing the overall score to be an 80 you know the other two were 85s it, it brought it up to an 80. um but this one the blister was in such bad shape that it brought the overall score down to a 75. i would argue that this one's overgraded this is this this blister looks way worse than a 75 to me i probably would have given this blister a 70 at best i mean that's that's pretty heavy damage for a 75. I mean, to call this one a 75 and the last one a 75, I, I think that's way overgraded in my opinion. I probably would have given this one a card. Let's say the other two scores are fine. I would have gone card 80, blister 70, figure 85 for an overall 70 plus or an overall 75. Probably an overall 70 plus would, be, would have been my opinion on this one. Anyway, just, just my two cents. But <clears throat> So it just comes down to, to the item and what the grader sees that day. I mean, it's, it's all you know subjective, but... Um, that's just my personal opinion. Anyway, that one sold for $565 plus shipping. And we had a number of different Imperial Gunners that sold. So that was the Power of the Force, a CAS 75. Now here was another one that was an AFA 80. And this one, the card got an 85, the blister 75, figure 90. But you can see here that this blister was not nearly bad enough to, uh, to, to hurt the overall score. So this one, the overall score got brought up to an 80 because the figure score was 90 and the card score was 85. And I don't know how this one honestly got a 75 subscore. You know, based on the last one, this one really should be a, a, an 80 subscore for the for the blister. So 
It all depends on the grader. It all depends on the grading company. You just never know. But anyway, that one was an archival case. It did have that ugly case style up top, but, you know, whatever. So it's a beautiful item. That one sold for $840 plus shipping. And then the last one was easily the hottest. This is one that Gary Wallace pointed out, who's a subscriber and Patreon supporter and buddy of mine. This was an unpunched tri-logo, and it was missing the weapon. So it was a factory error missing the blaster for the Imperial Gunner. Really good shape, unpunched, just gorgeous card. One little tiny ding in that upper right-hand corner of the blister, but otherwise pretty immaculate. And he asked me what I thought it would sell for. I said probably between eight and nine hundred dollars. This was early on during the auction, and it stayed about five hundred dollars all the way to the very end, and it sold for eleven hundred and thirty-six dollars at the very end. It jumped from like five or six hundred to eleven thirty-six in the last thirty seconds or so. So uh, very high demand item though. But yeah, this one was a factory error where the where the weapon was not packed in with it. So. What a beauty, though. Um, next, we had another last 17. This was an AFA 80 plus, and this one was a clear blister. It looks clear anyway. No, it's yellowed. I'm sorry. It's a yellow, but very slightly yellowed. Uh, EV 99, but 80 plus archival case. Gorgeous, gorgeous uh, example. That blister is, you know, even though it's yellowed, it's that's about as good as it gets, really. Um, unless you're paying uh, for a clear blister, which I would never do, just given that almost all of these are gonna. They're all going to convert at some point to yellowed, but you can see here how nice and clean that that blister is, even if it's slightly yellowed. It's uh, in really nice shape. But uh, anyway, that one sold for seven hundred and ten dollars. I thought that was a steal. Whoever got that one, I would have paid that all day long for that EV ninety nine. Here's another one. Um, this one was an unpunched uh, AFA seventy, so a little bit lower grade. Uh, but you can see here the blister on this one got a seventy. And it was, you know, the blister damage was bad enough that it brought the overall score down to a 70. So this goes back to the same topic we were just talking about, where the card was an 80, the figure was an 85, but the blister was so badly a 70 that it brought the overall score down to a 70. And that's probably about right. That's probably about what I'd score it to. It had pretty heavy dinging there. But despite all that, that still sold for $655. So $655 for this one with a clear blister but lower AFA score. This one was a higher AFA score but yellow blister on a different card back and punched versus unpunched was the other, the other one was unpunched. I believe. Yeah. The other, one, the other one was unpunched, but this one sold for only slightly more. Me personally, I would have taken the power of the force on this one. That one, that's, that's the one I would have taken, even though I do like the, I like to try the look of tri logo card backs better. Um, but given the, the difference in grading for these two, I probably would have gone with the yellow power of the force for about the same price. Just my personal opinion, but um, here was another last 17, a lot of last 17 this weekend. Um, this one was an AFA yellowed 80, a Monomon, and that, that one sold for a much bigger number than I expected. This one had the card 75, blister 85, figure 80. Why it got an 80, I have no idea, unless it just had some, some yellowing or something going on. But, uh, anyway, that one sold for $880 plus shipping. That's a big number to me for, for that Amonamon. Um, but he's been going up. I mean, his, his price just loose, ungraded is, is crazy right now. Um, here we had another uh, collectible investment brokerage loose graded yak face. This was an AFA 80 plus, And this one sold for about what I paid for mine in an AFA 80 earlier this year. So you can see how much it's gone up for um, a yak face in a lower grade. Uh, 80, uh, 80 plus grade. Pretty, pretty example, though. That one sold for $617 plus shipping. That's yeah, that's a little bit more than what I paid. I think I, I don't remember exactly what I paid. I want to pay. I want to say I paid five twenty-five or five fifty for mine. Um, and I think I don't know if we pulled this one up yet or not. Let me let me double check here. Yeah, we already we already looked at this one. I just uh, accidentally pulled it up twice. Yeah, that's just that that AFA eighty Imperial Gunner. And yeah, we we looked at both of those. So that's really all I had for this for this video. But just a whole bunch of last seventeen sold this weekend. And I got I got kind of diverted there on how the grading works when you have one low subscore versus two higher subscores and how it can affect the overall grade. But I, I mean I get that question probably five times a week, and I have a video on that on that subject. If you look up you know how are mint on card Star Wars items graded, action figure grader. If you search that on YouTube, it'll pop up. But I go into great detail on that. But I, I still get that question all the time. So. You know, maybe for those of you who are new to the channel, you might want to check it out because I, I try to, you know, help folks out with that kind of information who maybe are, are new to grading and, you know, new to that kind of stuff and why some things grade where they do. But uh, 
Anyway, if you're new to the channel and you like this kind of information, please consider subscribing. And to all my existing subscribers, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back soon.